welcome back to my channel. My name is Holly, and if you are new here, I would absolutely love if you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm working my way up to 500 subscribers, and I'm really excited about it. So if you do enjoy my content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and also maybe the like button on your way out. That'd be really awesome. But anyways, <laughs> sorry, I just had to get that out there. Um, but today we are going to be doing a huge book haul. I am so beyond excited because I got books for Christmas and to be honest with you okay I really wanted books for Christmas so I told my boyfriend I want books for Christmas and so what I did was I just basically gifted myself <laughs> he gave me his credit card and he was like okay go to it so I went on book outlet and I ordered myself a bunch of books for Christmas and I got exactly what I wanted so <laughs> It works out um, but the first two books that I'm going to be showing you are actually books that I picked up by myself um, before Christmas so but I just know how to put these in a haul yet so I thought I would show you them um, but the first one is the sequel to the Caravelle trilogy and that is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber I really really enjoyed the Caravelle trilogy one of my favorite uh, YA read so I was really excited that she was writing another well I guess this is, good, this is supposed to be another trilogy as well um, but this one focuses on a main character of the Caravelle series which is Jax so I'm really really excited about that I'm actually about halfway through it right now um, but I am going to go ahead and read you guys the synopsis of all of these books um, so this might be a long video <laughs> I have quite a few books to get through um, but I'm really excited about all of them so Let's go ahead, I'll read you the synopsis for this one and then we'll move on into the next one. So this one says, um, for as long as she can remember, Evangeline Fox has believed in true love and happy endings until she learns that the love of her life will marry another. Desperate to stop the wedding and to heal her wounded heart, Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. But after Evangeline's first promised kiss, she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game and that the Prince of Hearts wants far more from her than she pledged. He has plans for Evangeline, plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy. So, so far, pretty good. I'm not going to get into it. We'll talk about it in a wrap up, but so far I'm liking it. All right, you guys, sorry if my angle changed or anything like that. I had to do two things, which was change my battery, and second of all, unplug my dehumidifier because I realized it was making a huge noise as I was talking, so sorry if that annoyed you throughout the first little bit of the video. But anyways, let's carry on. The second book that I picked up is The Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Album, and Mitch Album is one of those authors that I will pick up anything that he writes. Um, <laughs> As you guys know, if you are on my channel, I typically read thrillers and horror, um, but uh, and some fantasy here and there. Um, but Mitch Album is an author that I discovered when I was in my young, early 20s um, with my favorite book of all time, which is still my favorite book of all time, and that is The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And I discovered that book, fell in love with it, read a couple more from him, and just picked, gradually picked up everything that he's written. And he is just such a profound author to me because his books just really make you think about the deeper meaning of life. And they make you laugh, they make you cry, and they just hold so much meaning to them. And I just love the way that he tells a story. So... This one says, what would happen if, and a lot of times his books do um, carry around a higher power or God, and you know, my favorite book, The Stranger, The Five People You Meet in Heaven, um, and I mean, you can tailor that to however you believe, whatever you believe, you know what I mean? Like, for me, whenever I read a book about that, I just tailor that to meet my own beliefs, if that makes sense. Anyways. What would happen if we cried out to God for help and someone claiming to be God actually appeared before us? So sets the scene in Mitch Album's most beguiling and inspiring novel yet, one that drives to the core of our deepest beliefs. The story is narrated by a lonely passenger named Benji who recounts the events in a notebook that is discovered a year later, when an empty raft washes up on the island of Le Monstrat. It falls to the island's chief inspector, Jardy Lafleur, a man battling his own demons to solve the mystery of what really happened out at sea. So basically what ends up happening is they, I'm not sure if it's one person or several people are 
trapped in a life raft and they are praying up to God for help and all of a sudden they see a, they see somebody in the ocean that they go and pick up and save and this person claims to be God so interesting <laughs> so we'll see what goes on with that um, and now we're gonna get into the books that I got for I was gonna say for Halloween for Christmas I am done it is like almost 10 o'clock at night when I'm filming this video and I have got my kids to bed. I've got everything in the house clean, but I'm just mentally ready for bed. So forgive me. Um, <laughs> we're going to start out with a book called The Lost Village um, by Camilla Sten. And so these I all got from Book Outlet and I'm realizing that Book Outlet like just obviously gets all of their like reject books from other stores. <laughs> so because I always see like different, um, like this one has a Target 30% off sticker on it and then this one this next one has a Walmart 30% off sticker so I, I didn't know that but I've kind of pieced that together um so <laughs> this one says that this is the Blair Witch Project meets Midsommar in this brilliantly disturbing thriller from Camilla from Camilla Sten an electrifying new voice in suspense Documentary filmmaker Alice Lindstedt has been obsessed with the vanishing residents of an old mining town dubbed the Lost Village since she was a little girl. In 1959, her grandmother's entire family disappeared in the mysterious tragedy, and ever since, the unanswered questions surrounding the only two people who were left, a woman stoned to death in the town center and abandoned newborn, have plagued her. She's gathered a small crew of friends in the remote village to make a film about what really happened, but there will be no turning back. Not long after they've set up camp, strange things begin to happen. Equipment is destroyed, people go missing, as doubt breeds fear and their very minds begin to crack. One thing becomes startlingly clear to Alice. They are not alone, but they're looking for the truth. What happens if it finds them first? So that sounds super creepy. I've not really had very much time to begin reading since Christmas, so I'm really, <laughs> really excited to get started on some of these. But um, this next one is by Adrian Mather. Oh, Adriana Mather, rather. Okay, how to hang a witch. <laughs> <laughs> being the new girl is tough being the new girl in Salem could be deadly Samantha Mather has just moved that's interesting I don't think I've ever seen an author name their main character after themselves that's interesting Samantha Mather has just moved to Salem Massachusetts the site of the infamous witch trials it would be tough for anyone to start over in the middle of high school but when your great 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 add a few more greats to that grandfather was the one putting the accused witches on trial, your family reputation has a way of preceding you. So Sam isn't entirely surprised when she's targeted by a group of girls known as the Descendants. You can probably guess who their ancestors were, right? Yep, the witches. As if dealing with a checkered family past wasn't enough, Sam finds herself confronted by a handsome but seriously stubborn ghost and discovers she is at the center of a centuries-old curse. Stopping the cycle of evil will mean working with the descendants and proving her own innocence. But does anyone actually care if Sam is innocent or is Salem's deadly history destined to repeat itself? I love anything to do with the Salem witch trials. When I was younger, I used to think maybe, I mean, maybe it's true, but I used to think that I was um, reincarnated from that time because I have just always had an obsession with the Salem witch trials ever since I was a kid. We're talking like a young kid, like eight years old. I was always interested in it which is kind of a weird thing, I know. <laughs> Next is a book, another one by Adriana Mather, and this is Haunting the Deep. Um, so I believe, I don't think, oh yeah, it is. Oh, I didn't even realize that, you guys. This is the second one to this. I didn't even realize this. So this is a series. I just realized this. Okay, this is cool. This, this is the first book and this is the second book. Neat. Okay, well, I don't really want to read, I don't want to read the synopsis for this one again because... I don't want to know what happens in this one. Okay, I'm not going to read the synopsis for this one. Just know that it's the second one to this one. <laughs> I don't want to know. You know, sometimes in the synopsis, you kind of get gather hints of what happens in the first one. I don't want to do that to myself because that one book sounds good. Next is Lisa Jewell, The Family Upstairs. And I have gone back and forth about purchasing this one lots of times. I've seen it everywhere. Um, it's a New York best times, a New York Times bestseller. I just probably need to slow down my speaking because I'm just <laughs> stumbling all over my words. But I've seen this all over the place and I've gone back and forth on whether to pick it up, but it was really, really cheap on Book Outlet. So 
I thought, what the heck? Um, but this one says, soon after her birthday, Libby Jones returns home from work to find the letter she has been waiting for for 25 years. She rips it open with one driving thought. I am finally going to know who I am. She learns not only the identity of her birth parents, but also that she is the sole inheritor of their abandoned mansions on the banks of the Thames. Isn't that like a dream come true? <laughs> Everything in Libby's life is about to change, but what she can't possibly know is that others have been waiting for this day as well, and she is on a collision course to meet them. In the family upstairs, the master of the bone chilling suspense brings us the can't look away story of three entangled families living in a house with the darkest of secrets. So that could go a few different ways. I'm not sure if this is going to be like a haunted mansion or if this is going to be crazy people living in the house. Like, I'm not too sure, um, but it is supposed to be a thriller. So I guess we'll see what happens with that. Next is a book by E. Lockhart called Genuine Fraud. I recently read uh, my first E. Lockhart book and I, I don't think I was too impressed by it, um, but we'll give it another shot. Have you ever wanted to be someone else? Imogen lives at the Playa Grande Resort in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. She spends her days working out in the hotel gym and telling other guests about how she was forced out of Stanford. But Imogen isn't really Imogen, she's Jewel, and she's on the run from something or someone. Which means, where is the real emotion? Rewind. Jewel and Emojin are the closest of friends, obsessed with each other, with each other even. Emojin is an orphan, an heiress. She and Jewel spend a summer together in a house on Martha's Vineyard, sharing secrets they'd never reveal to another soul. But that was months ago. Where is Emmy now? But that was months ago. Where is Emmy now? And why is Jewel using her name? So that could be a tale of friendship gone wrong. I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, this one looks really fun by Kate Williams, and it's called The Babysitter's Coven. Um, it says, babysitting's a real witch. I might want to, like, this one seems so fun. I might want to leave this to, like, next October. You know, Halloween vibes. 17-year-old um, Esme Pearl has a babysitter's club. She knows it's kind of lame, but what else is she supposed to do? Get a job? Gross. And lately, Esme needs all the, ca all the cash she can get because it seems like destruction follows her everywhere she goes. Enter Cassandra Heaven. She's Instagram model hot, dresses like she found her clothes in a dumpster, and has a rebellious streak as gnarly as the cafeteria cooking. So why is Cassandra willing to do anything, even take on a potty training two-year-old to join Esme's ba babysitter's club? Turns out Esme and Cassandra have more in common than they think, and they're about to discover what being a babysitter really means. A heroic lineage of superpowers, magic rituals, and saving the innocent from seriously terrifying evil, and all before the parents get home. So this one just seems like really fun. This definitely seems probably like a little bit of a younger read than I normally would read. I do read a lot of YA mixed in, um, but this one seems like an even younger than that, but I don't know. It seemed kind of fun, and I thought it'd be kind of like a cool witchy read, right? for the fall season. Next is The Haunted by Bentley Little. Um, that's a super creepy cover. <laughs> um, it says, Julian and Claire Perry and their two children, Megan and James, have made the move to a bigger, nicer home in their city's historic district. But something isn't right. The neighbors seem reluctant to visit. Claire can't shake the feeling that someone is watching her. Megan receives increasingly menacing and obscene texts, and James is having terrible dreams. No wonder, considering what he's seen at the corner of the basement, staring at him and shuffling closer ever so slowly. Pity no one warned them about the house. Now it's too late because the darkness at the bottom of the stairs is rising. What a creepy cover. <laughs> that one sounds super scary. And next is by Stephen Chopsky, and this is Imaginary Friend. I read another book of his a couple of years ago. Um, what was it called? I can't remember what it's called, but one of his more uh, popular reads. Um, and I really liked it. So, single mother Kate Reese is on the run, determined to improve life for herself and her son, Christopher. She flees an abusive relationship in the middle of the night with her child. Together, they find themselves drawn to the tight-knit community of Mill Grove, Pennsylvania. It's as far off the beaten track as they can get. Just one highway in, one highway out. At first, it seems like the perfect place to finally settle down. Then Christopher vanishes. That's terrifying. That is so scary. As a mom, that's so scary. For six long days, no one can find him until Christopher emerges from the woods at the edge of town, unharmed but not unchanged. 
He returns with a voice in his head only he can hear, with a mission only he can complete. Build a treehouse in the woods by Christmas, or his mother and everyone in the town will never be the same again. So this one definitely sounds interesting, for sure. Pretty creepy. Imaginary friends. Huh? Um, so the next four books are actually cookbooks, which I'm super excited for. Um, because I'm going to show you the two most exciting ones first. I'm so excited about them. Number one is the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook. So this has all of the yummy snacks from the Disney Parks. It's got everything from the Dole Whip, like, oh my goodness. Gaston's giant cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. You guys, <laughs> like, I was telling my um, baked macaroni and cheese with pulled pork. I was telling my sister-in-law, she, um, Every other weekend she doesn't have her kids, so she comes over to our place and we just like eat snacks and watch shows, watch trash TV and Big Brother and stuff like that, right? And I was telling her, I'm like, our snack game is about to be leveled up with these cookbooks. I'm so excited. So yeah, so the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook has all of the Disney snacks and I'm very excited about this one. Um, and then following that on the same sort of line is the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. So all of the delicious foods from the books. And I love that this one actually has like the ripped kind of edges. Can you guys see that? Uh, I'm assuming that this has the butterbeer recipe because if not, that's unacceptable. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's like everything, like all the food that they have. So nutty fruitcake for kids, old fashioned chocolate buttermilk sheet cake, petunias pudding. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so excited. Bath buns, creatures, French onion soup. Oh, I'm excited. Very excited for these. Next is a book called Love Your Gut to Supercharge Your Digestive Health and Transform Your Well-Being from the Inside Out. So I've been doing a lot of research lately into gut health because most people in the world actually suffer from leaky gut syndrome, which they don't even know that they have. And I believe that I'm one of those people. So I've been doing a lot of research into leaky gut syndrome and how to um, heal your gut. So I think this is going to be a really, really good read for me. It has recipes in it, but it's also like an informative book as well. So I'm excited about that. Hopefully, hopefully start having a better feeling tummy. And the last book that I got is another cookbook and it is Mostly Plants, 101 Delicious Flexitarian Recipes from the Poland Family. Um, so, I, don't, I mean, you guys wouldn't know this. I've talked about this on my other channel at length. Um, but recently, well, for about six months now, I have stopped eating beef and pork. I started getting a lot of arthritis symptoms in my hands and my fingers. And um, I stopped eating meat completely for a month and then I slowly started adding things back in and I realized that what was causing these flare-ups is beef and pork. So um, yeah, so I just wanted to pick up like some more vegetarian kind of cookbooks in order to, you know, just have some more options because I am eating more vegetarian meals. I'm still eating chicken and fish and stuff, but oftentimes I will end up choosing vegetarian options. So it's nice to just, you know, have a cookbook with some more options for me there, so. All right, you guys, so that wraps up my book haul. So those are the books that I got for Christmas and also a couple that I got before that, but I'm really, really excited. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any, if you've read any of those books and what your thoughts on them were. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.